What's up guys, welcome back to another one of our content advent calendar videos where we have a video every day through to Christmas Eve. Today, we're diving into Lightroom. We're gonna edit a sunset photo together. Now, I've got this photo here, took it on the Sony a7 IV, but you can probably immediately see this is gonna be slightly different. When I took this photo with the a7 IV, it was before it was announced, and the raw file kind of codec that you'd use in Lightroom, that Lightroom uses to read the raw files, wasn't available, so I had to shoot in JPEG. And I was shooting a sunset, so I was a little bit concerned about being able to pull back details from the highlights and the shadows and stuff like that. So I decided to shoot in S-Log3, even though it was a photo and not a video. And actually, I'm pretty pleased that I did because it gives me a lot of room, it gives me a lot of dynamic range to pull back details in both the highlights and the shadows, which is important in a situation like this with the sunset where we have quite a contrasty kind of scene. We might have a very dark foreground, very bright sky, but as you can see, it's all very flat at the moment. It's all very uh, colorless and low contrast, which is exactly what we want because we're gonna add in the contrast, the saturation, and all of that stuff. So that's an interesting way to kind of initially approach a photo like this. Let's dive in and let's start editing. So what I wanna do is come out with a nice photo where the Lightroom is kind of the central subject with a beautiful burning sky above and the darker kind of, you know, rugged landscape kind of foreground to this as well. This is up on Beachy Head if you're interested. Uh, I absolutely love that location. Uh, and I'm always finding new ways to take photos of this lighthouse. It's a great, it's a great place to go and take photos, to be honest. And I'm very lucky that it's not very far away. So let's start off with some pretty obvious stuff. Let's go ahead and add some contrast to this. Uh, we'll just bump that up a bit. We obviously might come back and adjust some of this. Let's bring the highlights down a touch. I'm actually going to bring the shadows up a bit. I'm going to bring the highlights down even further. Look at how much detail we have in this sky, though. For JPEG, this is fantastic. I'm actually going to bring the blacks down and the whites up a little bit as well. And the texture up a touch clarity up a decent amount now again we might come back to some of this vibrance is going to come up quite a bit as is saturation now tone curve i often leave this alone at first but we're going to dive straight in this time i'm going to bring down the kind of shadow part so i'm going to select a point there and just drag it down and the highlights i'm going to drag them up a little bit as well i might just adjust that slightly and i might even bring this shadow part up here i don't want to darken the foreground too much but we can always do that later if we want to as well. So let's scroll down here to the hue, saturation, and luminance panel. Now, first of all, let's bring that orange down to more of a burning orange. Yellow's down towards the orange as well. I want that sky to really be on fire. You know, green's down to yellow a little bit, and then the blue's towards the aqua slightly. Saturation, absolutely gonna pump that orange up, pump that yellow up a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna leave luminance for now because we're gonna come back. Let's come to color grading. We can add some kind of orange, I think. I think we'll probably add a little bit of orange to all three of these, the highlights, the shadows, and the midtones. And then we can go ahead and kind of adjust it after the fact. But actually, I think that looks quite good. In fact, I might come up to the top now, sort of darting around all over the place, but that's often how I'll choose to edit, just to one thing affects another thing, affects another thing. I want to affect this white balance a little bit. It might be too warm. I want to warm it up, add a little bit of magenta, uh, but that might be a little too much. But you know what we're going to do? We're going to we're going to carry on with it like this because this is a global adjustment, and so that means if we're affecting the whole photo. We're going to come to doing some local adjustments shortly, and I think that will probably change up some stuff in pretty meaningful ways. I'm going to add a little bit of sharpening, not too much, but let's bring that up to 20. I can ignore the lens correction because there's no metadata, I don't think, to actually be able to see what the lens was, so Lightroom's certainly not going to be able to correct for any distortion, but I don't think there's anything particularly uh, noticeable there that needs correcting. Uh, this is probably shot on the 24 to 70. Yeah, I think it was F2.8 G Master. What a lens. What an all-rounder. Right, let's pop a bit of vignetting on there. Not too much, but just a touch. And then with the calibration, let's bring the orange over toward, or the red primary over towards the orange, the blue primary over towards teal. Great place to sort of start. We can move away from that if we want to, whatever we want to do. Now, the next thing I want to do, I've done a bit of a nice sort of global edit there. I want to come into the crop overlay and I want to make this 16 by nine to begin with, because I think it, I think it'll work really well with kind of a wide feel to it. I'm going to bring that in a little bit. You know, the a 74 has got uh, good high resolution, you know, high, much higher resolution than the a 73 which I would normally shoot on. But that means we can crop a little bit and retain some of this detail. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to bring this in and then pop the lighthouse central, but just above that kind of lower line there in the rule of thirds. Let's click done. 
I like that. Now we've got this big expanse of sky, which we're going to play around with a bit of foreground. And then of course the lighthouse itself. So what are we going to do next? Well, this is where we're going to start doing local adjustments. We can come up here to the masking and with the new update to sky uh, to Skyrim to the new update to Lightroom, which I've actually gone over in a specific video. There's a lot we can do here. First things first, let's select the sky. Lightroom is now going to detect where the sky is. It's going to mask it out for us and it'll cover it in red to show us what it's done. Perfect. Really, really good job. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and double click mask one there and just name that sky. So I know exactly what I'm doing here. Uh, I might bring that down a little bit in terms of exposure, not too much. I'm going to bring the dehaze up a little bit. Shadows down. That's just going to make those darker clouds a bit darker. Maybe the blacks down a little bit as well, just to darken up those clouds whites up just to add a bit of contrast to the sky there and i think i'll leave it as is for now i love the color in there i might even bring that dehaze up a little bit more you know something like something like 20. yeah you can go way too far with dehaze too easy to go too far you know we've all done it so <laughs> so i like how that looks now. Look at that sky. We can see before and after of the whole edit by pressing the backslash key on the keyboard. So this was where we started. This is where we've got to. A real injection of, of contrast, color. I'm very, very pleased with it, but we're obviously not done. So I'm going to come back up to masking. Let's go ahead and click create new mask and let's make a radial gradient. Now I'm going to drag this on as kind of an oval around the lighthouse here. And I'll go ahead, I'm going to click this mask, radial gradient, click these three, but the uh, three buttons here, invert. Now that's going to select everything outside of this circle. And what I can do is just bring down the exposure of everything outside of the lighthouse. So I'm going to call that one inverted subject. That lets you know that that layer, that mask is everything other than the subject, which in this case is of course, our lighthouse here. Now just move that slightly to make it definitely over the lighthouse. And I'm going to create a new mask again, this time a brush. And what I want to do is I'm going to use a slightly smaller brush. I can adjust that by using the mouse scroll wheel. I want to go ahead and just paint on the kind of area where the lighthouse is. Now I've got a flow of 43. That means that I can kind of build up here how strong this is by painting over it and over it. If you had a flow of 100, it'd be a maximum kind of hardness that you're painting on uh, or, or pressure, I guess, or opacity that you're painting on. But with 43, we can build it up gradually. I'm going to hold the space bar and left click to zoom in a little bit on this lighthouse. And I'm just going to paint onto the lighthouse itself. What I'm going to do is actually just brighten this slightly. Now I've got auto mask on. That's going to help a little bit with the uh, keeping inside the lines, not going to outside of, uh, of things here, but I think we can do a pretty good job. Just masking this up. Maybe just pop a bit in there, a little bit around here. Yeah, I think that looks pretty decent. Let's press space and left click to zoom back out. And then we can just bring the exposure up of that area. And that's going to help with just sort of making that pop a little bit compared to the rest of the foreground here. Now we can go one step further here, but first let's name this layer. Let's call this lighthouse. What we can do is we can create a new mask. You know what else I might do actually, before we do that on the lighthouse mask, I'm just going to add a bit of clarity as well. I'm pretty happy with that. Now I'm going to create a new mask, a linear gradient. And this one I can drag in from the bottom. I'm just going to, sort of cover the uh, main bits of the foreground here. You can see it kind of feathers its way up. It's very nice. And we're going to add some clarity absolutely to this foreground, but then we're going to just darken it a touch as well to so bring the exposure down. I'm just going to name that one foreground. Lovely. Okay. So let's have a look. Let's press done here. Let's have a look at where we were and where we are now. So that's where we started. And again, this is just the backslash key. That's where we are now. We can press Y to see side by side. Look at the huge difference we've made here. Absolutely awesome. So I'm really happy with that. Now what we're going to do is go into masking here. I'm going to create a new mask. Let's go brush. And with a reasonably big brush here. So again, using the mouse scroll wheel to affect that. I'm just going to paint in this top bit of the sky here. And I'm going to 
actually change the color temperature here to more of a sort of a, a, a cooler tone. Add a bit of blue in there because I think that's going to sort of offset that flaming kind of orange sky. And I think that actually looks really nice. What we can also do if we come back in here, we've got this called Mars One. So let's call this, double click and name this uh, Sky Top. Then we know. I want to darken that bit of the sky as well. Not too much, but just a little bit. And look at that. I am really, really happy with how that has come out. Let's do backslash again, before, after, before and after next to each other. Of course, that's Y on the keyboard. Yeah, I am very, very happy with how that has come out. I've got to say, when I was there, it was a particularly lovely sunset. It was very, very fortunate. I actually received the a7 IV from Sony uh, about half an hour before sunset. So I managed to get the camera out. Fortunately, it was, it's charged up battery, pop a card in, rush out. And I managed to snap a couple of photos. Now, I think the sun had pretty much gone down at this point, but still a, a lot of color in the sky. And by shooting in that S Log 3 format, that picture profile, I was able to capture more kind of information, dynamic range within the photo so that I don't have a blown out sky or, of course, just horribly crushed shadows in the foreground. Of course, if you shoot it raw, it's going to be even better. You'll have even more information to play around with, which ultimately will give you the best possible end result through editing. But if you don't shoot raw, this is an interesting way of doing things and something I'd never thought to do before. I'd never really had cause to, but actually it was a very interesting way of doing things. Now, if there's anything you'd like to see covered in a future video during our content advent calendar, let me know down in the comments because all ideas are welcome. <laughs> all ideas are welcome because 24 videos, there's a lot of videos. And in case you're thinking, must have shot them ahead of time. Nope. So <laughs> all ideas are welcome, uh, valued, in fact, appreciated. So let me know anything down there. Any questions, of course, pop them down in the comments. There's a link to all the stuff used for this video, including the A7 IV, down in the description of this video. You can check that out for yourself. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. That massively helps me out. I will, of course, see you in the next video. And until then, as always, thanks for watching.